All right, welcome back to Living Our American Dream. My name is Matt. Behind me, you see this orange device here. If you don't follow this channel, or if you do follow this channel, this is the camper that I built. I call it a square drop camper pod. And this is just gonna be a quick video to show you how this thing works and show you what it looks like and how we put it on our trailer. We've been using it just for family camping trips and it is that time of year this year. So we're gonna put the camper pod on the trailer and I'll show you what it looks like and hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna put this hitch, hitch ball in my receiver of my ATV. I have a winch on the front of this thing and I'm gonna show you guys the easy way to do this. I've had people in videos in the past tell me, oh, it must be nice to have the ATV with the winch and a tractor or something to do this. You could also do this same thing that I'm about to do with this come along winch, which you can buy at Harbor Freight. I'm just gonna use the electric winch because I have it. So the way I have this set up is I store the camper like this. I've got a little dolly thing that I have kind of pinned onto the back right here. I'm going to show you guys that in a second. But to move this thing around, I use just any automotive floor jack. I can put this thing underneath the front. And I have a steel reinforced bar across here that I use to jack it up and down. So I'll take this off the blocks. And from here, I can maneuver this thing anywhere in my shop. And I needed it to be this way because when this is taking up space in my shop in the off season, I kind of don't want it to be immobile. So I can steer with the floor jack. And all I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to get it lined up close to this trailer like so so from right here the steel bar on the bottom of here this thing right here is going to get a strap around it and if I did not have the ATV I would use that come along and I would come right up to here and I would attach the come along to this trailer structure and I would pull it on with the come along. Since I have an ATV, I'm going to pull my ATV to the front of the trailer with the winch facing this way and I'll run the winch cable through there and we'll run it on much, much faster. keep a short piece of strap in my toolbox that's only purpose is for pulling this camper on here and this will be in the center this will go to our winch next we're going to come over here grab our ATV winch I could use a come along if I needed to. If you're thinking about doing a similar project to this. All right. The edges, if you can see the far corner where Monica's showing right uh, here, those skids, I have uh, a 45 degree angle cut in them. So what I'll be able to do is as I hit the winch, I should climb right onto the trailer. Now that I'm on the trailer, I want to go get my jack out of the way before I continue. If you can see in the video, I have a couple of scraps.
strap boards that I've screwed to the side of the trailer. This is to keep the correct spacing between the rail and the side of the camper so that it doesn't get scratched and it doesn't get, uh, the finish doesn't get beat up. So from here, I'll be able to pull this thing on. So I almost forgot in my design, the way that I attach the camper to the trailer rather than screwing through the trailer deck and having to line that up the, the best method that I came up with was a cable, two cables actually, that were capture the trailer frame and there's a turnbuckle underneath. When putting this thing on the trailer, you got to watch that this is sticking out and make sure that it rides along here so that it, you don't pinch it underneath because we're going to need that in a minute. So as soon as this comes off the ground, I've got two pins on each side. And then this thing will, actually I can probably let it ride right here. So now my dolly's going to come off. Just like I designed it. I had it too far back. I didn't have enough uh, tongue weight. So now I kind of got an idea of where it should be. That's about right there. So now we can pull the strap out of the front, and if I'm correct, I should have a few inches in the back. So clamping on. As easy as hooking this up and this turnbuckle I'll just tighten up until it's tight and it's kind of protected by this bar and the other one up front is also protected so we're not going to have any issues there and all I do is get it somewhat tight and I've never had this thing shift on me we took it all the way to Florida um, last year and back no issues. Just tighten up the lock nut there. I've never had it slide or move or cause any issues. I'll go do the front. We should be golden. There we go. So now that we've got this thing on the trailer and it's attached, it's essentially ready to go camping right now. Just show you a few quick features of this unit. It's pretty easy to move around inside the shop on a concrete floor. When I get to a campsite, I keep a level with a magnet on the side and put that level on there. And I can adjust my tongue till I get the unit level. That's pretty close. So I built this with two doors for entry. And as you can see right now, I have all of our stuff stored in here. Um, actually, let's just go ahead and take some stuff out. So we keep a cooler in here. I keep a bin for my clothing. When I travel, I like to put all my clothing and all my stuff in a bin. Pretty easy, pretty handy. We keep a water jug with us. And what I wanted to show you guys was this, which I'm kind of proud of, I guess. It is a homemade table 
one for each side. But basically, this just slides into place, creates a nice sturdy platform for us to work off of. So that's one feature. There's another table for the other side. Inside here, if we come to the door, I'll go to the other side. You'll see I have some carpets for the outside. I also have a trifold mattress. When everything is out of here, this is the sleeping quarters. So this will accordion style come all the way out. When we're not sleeping in here, um, you can see that it folds up and it creates a pretty big area to put our gear for uh, traveling. Additionally, you can sit in here as a couch. So most teardrop or square drop campers that I've seen, the height is only four feet high, which that would be about right here on this one. This one I built five feet high specifically for this reason. I wanted to be able to sit in here couch style. And uh, yeah, my wife's behind the camera and she can tell you I'm 6'1 and she's 5'9. And uh, there's plenty of room to sleep for two of us in here. And there's plenty of room for us to sit in here, the two of us. And even if it's, say, raining or windy or we got a storm passing through or something, we can actually sit the kids in here also if we had to. I'm going to hook this thing up to the ATV right now and take it up and uh, up to the house and power wash all the dust off of it. It's accumulated a bunch of dust sitting in here in the shop for the last year. And then we can get it back in here and I'll plug it in, show you guys the lights um, in the refrigerator and kind of how this whole thing works. And we'll be ready to go camping. first built this camper we had a separate like an outdoor kitchen setup that we would put underneath our um, awning here. The awning comes out about eight feet and what we found was you have to have it bumped out and you lose some space from the wheel well here. The spare tires in the way. So back on these tables I built these little brackets right here and what I didn't show you a minute ago is the fact that it kind of goes right over the top of the wheel well and the spare tire and it really makes the best use of space but there's another main reason that we do this and you can see me putting on these little strips of rubber here there's a reason for that too it kind of locks them in place better I just got to get my spacing here and they just sit here there's no Nothing fancy about it, but when I put this on here, this table will cover up the tire, the spare tire. And if you look, when I level the trailer and, and the camper, that means that this table is perfectly level. What we had before, if you're a camper like we are, you end up at a campsite that are a little bit crooked or it's dirt or it's got little holes in it or something. And we always had trouble getting our table to be level. So now when I level the, the trailer, our tables are always level. All right, coming around the back side here. Again, if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen the inside of this before, but some of these trailers have a full-blown kitchen in the back. We decided to go with more of a storage uh, utility space. But what I wanted to show you guys is our power setup is also very, very simple. We use a extension cord receptacle that matches the end of an extension cord here. Plug that in. We'll take our other end to the closest outlet, which at a campsite, who knows where that might be, but here, we're just gonna run it over to the wall of the shop. We know we got power when the cord lights up. And then everywhere throughout, we should have lights. So given this is the first setup of the year, we're going to make sure everything works. We're going to go ahead and turn on our interior light here. And like I 
I said before, we're about, I don't know, what are we, babe, a week or so, less than a week away from our camping trip. So we wanna make sure everything works. We're gonna go ahead and turn the refrigerator on. We will try our exterior lights. So that's working. And all I'm doing here is I'm making sure that the fuses aren't blown or something weird didn't happen. So on the inside, we've got a couple lights. We've got a bright light. We've got one that we've put some tape on to make it a little bit dimmer. We've got all these lights here. They all seem to be working. We have our exhaust fan in the top. We're gonna open that and we're gonna push, let's see. I don't know if that's in or out. It blows both ways. It blows in and it blows out. So that's fine. Let's check our receptacles real quick. We'll just use a quick on and off test. That works good. And these are all actually on the same circuit. So if one works, they're all gonna work. I'm gonna check the exterior. These end up a little bit tricky, but there is an external receptacle right here. These have been buttoned up since last year, so I don't see an issue. These are stored. The camper's stored in the barn, and I don't have any mice or anything in the barn, so there's no way anything can get in here. So this should be good to go, these awnings. Now, if you follow this channel, we're gonna have a full setup and review and another camping trip coming up. We're going to Burt Lake State Park here in Michigan. And for all you Michiganders out there, this is the lower peninsula of Michigan. It's way up here. So we're gonna be staying there for three nights coming up here, so it's gonna be fun. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. You see our, our basic setup. This is not really a full tour, but if you guys stick around, like, subscribe, or at least come back to our channel here in another week or so, you'll see a full setup at Burt Lake State Park. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.